What's going on everybody? Today's gonna to be a quick little video going over the effects of splitter angle and how to properly mount it in relation to the ground. A fellow racer uh, with a Corvette which runs one of our C5 splitters on it sent me this picture, I'll overlay it on, on the screen right now, and that wear down, the wore down area on the bottom left is actually the trailing edge of the tunnel. So that means the splitter was definitely mounted pointing upwards, and that's kind of why I'm doing this video. Alright, so first thing I gotta mention is this video is going to be related to flat splitters. Not anything like you'll see on like a GTLM car or a prototype, which kind of has the you know curve to it. That's a whole different story, a whole different ballgame. This is going to be more of like the club level racer who makes their own splitter and makes it out of a flat sheet of something. Plywood, uh, ABS plastic, one of our carbon fiber splitters, um, or even, even Alumalite, although I don't really recommend Alumalite, but that's a whole other issue. So... Recently, we went to the wind tunnel uh, with the Thai Speed BMW. They had some engine troubles just before getting to the wind tunnel, so they basically just slapped the splitter on it. And it wasn't until we got to the wind tunnel and realized that the splitter was actually mounted maybe more like this, um, which most people would realize that that you know, isn't a, a good way to mount it. But I have had people ask me if the front of the splitter should be up and you definitely don't want this scenario. So a lot of times when I do uh, you know, aerodynamic stuff on my car, I know I mention it in videos pretty often, I will measure certain points around my car so that way when I lift the car up, I lift it up evenly. You don't lift it up crooked and then build something level so when you drop it on the ground it's no longer level one way or the other. So, for example, the Thai Speed BMW, when the splitter was put on with an upward angle, we actually made front lift for a little bit, despite having a huge splitter on it. So, in order to remedy that quickly in the wind tunnel, we ended up lifting the rear of the car and dropping the front of the car, and at 100 miles an hour, picked up almost 100 pounds of downforce on the front. So, one of your main goals for mounting a splitter on your car is to get it at least level with the ground. So that way when the car is under braking and it, and it nosedives a little bit, you'll effectively have a little bit of a downward angle, which is kind of what you want. We're not taking into account any like, uh, you know, splitter tunnels or anything like that. A flat splitter needs a little bit of rake to it. So in an ideal situation, you would almost, I'm gonna exaggerate a, a little bit just to kinda of so it shows up, but you would almost want, you know, something like that. So that way, when the air comes in, it will almost get squeezed here. And from Bernoulli's principle, we know that when air gets squeezed, the it speeds up across the surface and when air speeds up across the bottom of the splitter here you get that low pressure creating the downforce i think a lot of people think a splitter works where like all you get is kind of like high pressure on the top and you do get high pressure on top but it's the low pressure underneath that does a majority of the work also one one more note on splitters if you do make your own Let's say we took this uh, splitter blade and let's just like expand it so I can kind of draw what I'm talking about. So let's say this is your splitter underneath of the car and you made it out of a piece of, let's just say plywood. I always recommend plywood if you're kind of trying to do like a cheap splitter. This would be the top of the splitter, ground would be right about here. If you can, you almost want to radius the front edge like this. You know, you could use like a router bit uh, or just take your time with like a grinder uh, 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 or like a sander or something. What this does, kind of like illustrated here, you'll have a low pressure region here. 
So the air will kind of want to quickly accelerate under the splitter, giving you a big low pressure zone here. Because if you ended up not having any of this, let's go back to like the hard, hard edge splitter like this. If you leave the front of your splitter square, this is kind of why I don't really recommend uh, alumilite. You can't really radius the edge. Um, or worse, you end up putting one of those like, you know, edge trim things on it. Might make it look nicer. But what happens is the air comes in and hits it. This hard edge right here, air just kind of hits it and you end up with like a, you know, separation zone right here, right off the bat. So you definitely don't want one of those edge guards. And if you can help it, try and put a little bit of like a radius on the leading edge of your splitter. So yeah, so hopefully this kind of clears up a few things. Anytime you have a flat splitter, at least level or a little bit of rake down. That's what you should be shooting for. Alright, so that's about it for this one. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like these kind of aerodynamic uh, whiteboard videos. Um, please hit that subscribe button as well. We got a few more um, you know, ideas floating around of videos I want to do. So, as always guys, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.